Okay, this is from Margo. <laughs> Good morning. It's Wednesday, September 14th. I think this is hilarious. Okay, so I'm going to get my comments going. There we go. Oh, have I got stories for you. <laughs> and I got a lot of learning today, too. Welcome, everybody. I, um, I, of course, watched a little bit of the news this morning with everything that's going on in London. And man, that the pop pomp and circumstance is just beautiful. I mean, just beautiful. And I heard some newscasters say something like, if anybody knows how to do it, it's, it's, it's England. And they're doing it. It's just... What a gracious, I mean, what a rain, you know. All right, I could go off on that. All right, how's John's surgery? Didn't happen. <laughs> nope. We went over there on Sunday night and enjoyed a beautiful dinner at the Trident in Sausalito. And that was our view from our table right there. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, had great food and everything and so then we go back to the hotel because we were in Marin which on a good day is an hour 15 so the last thing if you have to be there at 5 30 in the morning do you want to do is you know get up at three and drive over and then whatever so so he's had his pre-op he had his COVID test he had you know blood drawn his limbs qu quartered <laughs> and he, literally, he, they had given him like seven or six pills, had an IV in him, taking him down the hall, and somebody pointed out that John had a bite. And it wasn't from me, okay? It was a spider bite right here. And the, and the surgeon looked at it and said, I won't do it. He said, you go home and get that fixed, and then I will do the surgery for you. So we came home, went to urgent care. Um, they've got him on antibiotics, and the next, um, and he has to have it before the end of the month. Which Sue Rapp, I'm telling you, and anybody else here at retreat is Wednesday morning, which means I'll be leaving to uh, during you know uh, no frills the before part. I'll be leaving Tuesday later in the afternoon and then back Wednesday in the afternoon. So um, he was highly disappointed as I, but also the doctor said, I've been doing this, you know, I've had a zillion of these surgeries and I've only ever had one infection and I'm not going to in any way risk that this is going to somehow end up in your back. So needless to say, um, he was really disappointed. That said... You might be hearing stuff above. The rat, the mouse brigade is here. And you guys know I've been fighting mice for ever since I've been doing this plus before. And it turned out we had to finally get serious about the whole thing. And there are people in the attic. There's going to be people under the house. And all I pray is nobody falls through the ceiling. <laughs> That's all I pray. And that the mice go away. Although I don't want to gross anybody out. Um, Heidi had her first catch. <laughs> we actually have a movie of it. We're like, we need to go to house. <laughs> so anyways, that's what we're doing. And today I've got a lot to teach you, but of course we have stuff to look at first. All right. So I got this from Tara. <laughs> she got <laughs> these four cats when <laughs> I got Heidi, these kittens made her way into her life, and all they would do is sleep on her flipping keyboard. So she showed me how she solved it. Oh, we are so resourceful. I love us. She put a wire kitchen rack on top, and then she got another keyboard so the cats can sleep up there, but not on her keyboard. Oh, you guys, I love you when you send me these things. They just, and then I got that several days ago. And I thought, oh, don't let me lose it. Don't let me lose it. So I got it here. <laughs> okay. So then, oh, Mary Kay is all over uh, Quilters Take Manhattan. And that is something that happens in New York every time this time of year. And they are, again, going virtual this round, and it's uh, Quilters Take a Moment. It's starting today, 
and they've got some really, they got really, really um, a good lineup. So you might want to write that down. Quilters take a moment or Quilters Take Manhattan probably will get you to the same place. And if you're not doing anything for the next couple days, I would really recommend to do it. I absolutely love online classes. Absolutely love online classes because I got all my stuff, you know. It, it's completely different than being in person, but, you know, I don't have to pay for the plane ticket and all that good stuff. Okay, then this is that that we just looked at okay now you guys are having a ball with these crazy little sticks and um this is arta and i believe um i believe arta said that this was kind of a stretch for her but she was having a ball and you're all having a ball so let's take a look at what some of you are doing okay this one just came in this morning this is karen's and she decided to make a little pillow out of it and i'll tell you I don't think it's a bad idea to be making some of these samples and then decide how you're going to put it together, what speaks to your heart. Okay, and then this is Joyce. Oh my gosh, wake up. <laughs> it's fabulous. <laughs> it's just fabulous. You know, actually, Joyce, that looks like something Yvonne Porcilla would have done. And I can see you already know one of the things I'm going to be teaching you today, the bottom right. Okay. And then this is Gail's. And I think for Gail, this was a new experience too. And I love how she is taking advantage of some of the prints of fabric. So, and then even if you look at that yellow to the upper right-hand side, that's just a whole little another thing she put in. So it's playtime. It is completely playtime. Okay, this is Donna's from Modesto Guild. Donna, this one just, okay, believe Donna you said it was 18 inches I believe this is perfect this is absolutely perfect here's nine simple blocks with a border that's pretty cool too I mean I I, I this, this one took my breath away Donna and by the way I had a blast at your guild quilt show just saying okay then oh then Jane so this is fun Jane got out her circle maker and pulled out an old project that she'd been working on. I believe that's what you said. I think there's some of Ricky's cloth in there or I don't know. But anyway, she went nuts with the Bernina circle maker. So let me get some close-ups and I am going to teach that. And Bernina, uh-oh, where's the close-up? I didn't mean to do that one here. Um, Bernina is going to give us, I think, three that we can give away. But she went cuckoo with the stitches, and I've got some tips on how to not have it go wonky. I called Jeannie Delpit at Bernina, and she gave me some interesting information, too. Look at that. You know, these machines, you know, I don't care what brand. Well, I mean, I love my machine, but um, they've got all these fancy stitches. Okay. Let me go back now to Kathy, who I jumped over. Um, look at this. They're fabulous. Now today, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to stop, make them so they are, it can be different lengths and how they can crisscross. But then John found this, Eddie Van Halen's. <laughs> we want that. We want that. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah. So, all right. Let's move on to class, and um, I will take questions at the end. And once again, I always get nervous when I'm going to my PowerPoint, so be kind, <laughs> okay? Um, then I want to go here, and then I want to go down here. Hey, yay, I think we're good. Okay, this is what this is the note we ended on last um, last week, right? This is it. So I'm gonna get this out of the way. So now, what do you do if you want the stick to stop short? It is really super easy. The more difficult one is the crisscross. So here's what I'm talking about by stopping short. If you look carefully, the two on the right have been stopped short just by simply sewing on a um, another hunk of fabric. But then the one to the far left is basically what I'm going to show you. And it's so easy, it's crazy, all right? 
So basically, you make the cut, right? And you can see that the sticks, the stick is longer because I'm going to then sew, I'm going to seam that together in um, between the green and the yellow, all right? Like that. Um, and I wouldn't really bother trimming until, until the whole thing is done, but you're going to sew it just like how you sewed the other one, and you're going to press the stick to the background. Otherwise, it's going to get, so the yellow is going to get tr pressed towards the green. And the reason you want to do that is because um, if you press towards the yellow, you're going to end up with a big, big, huge fat lump. And you don't, you do not want that. Now, the other thing is I am so picky about pressing in my classes, but I'm uber, uber, about this. So while you might start from the back side and get those seams going out, you can kind of see them shadowing through on um, the back side of the fabric. I will then make sure there are no tucks, tucks in there. I think that's one thing that people do when pressing is they go, oh, okay, I'm going to press it and blah, blah, blah. And they really don't pay attention to the minutia of the whole thing. I mean, you really want to make sure, I mean, you can see the stitches there, you guys. That's how much I've pressed it. And you might even want to put a little shot of starch on it. So now what I want to do is I want to crisscross. This one becomes a little more tricky. And I'm going to teach you how to do it and get that thing going straight across, which you can see here, it's not, but it's close enough. Okay, so here we've done the first one. Note, I haven't trimmed it, and I just forgot to tell you something really important. I want this to end up, let's say, four inches finished. That original block was about six inches raw. So you've got a lot that's going to be trimmed off, but you're going to see some real goofy things happen here in a few minutes. So I would say whatever size you're going to do, be generous and add at least a couple inches to the background. So you've got room to chop. So here is um, the stick, the next stick I'm going to insert. And I just made a cut. <laughs> there you go. Remember, I would not go corner to corner. Okay. So I've cut now. Now what? I've inserted. I think I want this to be about like that layout. Now, see how wonky it is on the top and on the bottom? That's why you're going to want this extra um, fabric that you're going to trim away. But miraculously, it kind of came together. By the way, I chose to not do this live and to do it on PowerPoint because I think that this whole six class would be a blast for a guild, and I wanted to get it all documented. Plus, you've seen me fiddle around on the sewing machine and pull my hair out. Okay. So we've determined where I want to put it. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my purple disappearing quilter select ink pen and I'm going to mark the line where it would line up. I think that's the best way to say it. You can see with that purple pen where the top right needs to land and where the bottom left needs to land. Okay, so I marked it with that. Again, I love my purple disappearing ink pen. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take your quarter inch, quarter inch from the edge, from the two outside greens, okay, and mark it with the purple pen. And then um, I will do the same on the inside. You can see I've come into the stick and I've come in a quarter inch on the right side and a quarter inch on the left side. And then I took my little pink friction pen and I just marked to show you where I will be pinning. I will be pinning in exactly where those cross hatches are. I don't think you need to do that, but I just wanted to make sure you understood where I'm going on this. Okay? Remember, you can go back and watch this again if you so wish. Then I'm going to use my beautiful sh sharp glass head pins. We have lovely ones at Quilter Select. I come from the back. This is just like how we've done points in the back, you guys. I come from the back, and that, that pin is coming exactly through where that crosshair is. And it really is. I was taking this picture myself, and 
that's as well as I could do. I had to bring John in down the road. And then you can see that I've come in with that pen and I'm going to be heading to the upper right hash mark on the yellow. That's where I'm going. I want to go straight into there, just like that. All right? Then I'm going to drop in a pen an eighth of an inch before, or sixteenth of an inch before, a sixteenth of an inch after the dangly pins. We do that all the time when I'm lining up points. It's just that this is on an angle. So I'm, I've, I've got the top lined up properly. I'm in my sewing machine, and um, I'm going to start stitching my quarter inch. So as I get closer down to where the pin is in, I'm going to grab the head of the dangly pin. Oh, and I want to point out that this is Bernina's quarter inch foot. It's a 97D. They have a 37D also. Um, I am using the 97 and not the 37 because I left my single whole throat plate at taping. And I went, oh my gosh, uh, with the 37, you have to have it. I got to go buy a new one. But um, I, what I want to point out, why I brought that up, is you can see where the needle is going down, that you have a real clear shot into the, the point exactly where the pin is. You can see it. A lot of sewing machine quarter inch foots, they kind of have the hole, but then they, the part that's open is squished in together and you cannot do what I'm about to show, um, what I'm about to do here. All right. So I'm almost there. You can see I'm holding it. And as soon as the needle is going to go, uh, the sewing machine is going to go down into where the pinhole is, I take the pin out. And I can see I'm off just a little bit, but let's just keep going. I do the same thing with the next hole. I'm holding the pin right before the sewing machine needle goes down. I pull out the pin. All right, then I'm going to press to the outside, like I mentioned before. And then I'm, if you want, if you're chicken to do this step, you might, you could go and do a, a big basting stitch, just stitch in just that area to see if you nailed it and then go back and do the whole thing. I chose to live dangerously. So now I gotta do the same thing on the other side. Same thing, okay? And I will press to the background green again. And the reason the threads aren't the same is I realized I had a white in the bobbin and a lavender on top, but you can still see it. There you go. You say a little prayer. It looks pretty darn good, yay! And then you can use the ink, or the backs, the end of the purple ink pen, Quilter Select, and erase it if you want, or just let it dry for 24 hours. Now I'm going to square it to my four and a half, and then I'm going to take off that left-hand side, cut that at three quarters of an inch, and I've got a stick that is ready to go to the next one. Um, Sharon, it's really not impossible. It, it, you just have to do it a couple times. Take your time. Do it on fabric that's non-precious to you. And then this is another one that's just sticks going down in a column, just like pickup sticks, just or stairs, just boom, 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 boom. So you could see in the upper left, you can make it shorter. You could see down the middle, you can do a series. And on the right, it looks like I've just inserted a little dot of color. The main thing, if you're going to do something that's not all geometric, geometrically lined up, um, so what you're going to do is then work in, I'll bet these are all divisible by two, all these blocks, okay? I think that's it. That is. Now, let's go back, and I will shut down my PowerPoint. Find my light. Oh, we did it. Okay. Um, this looks impossible. It's not. Uh, Barbara goes, um, I'd like to know how I could get information about the windmill quilt, maybe in an Irish chain. Did you do a tutorial? Uh, no, but go to thequiltshow.com and type in Irish chain and see if we have any tutorials on that. Okay. So get back over here. Any questions before I show you more stuff? Uh, here. 
Ta-da! Pretty cute, huh? Yeah, and be careful with your pressing. You know, that ink will go away. That's this pen, right? Just in case somebody's new here, it's this one. It's the quilter select. This side is disappearing. This side, there's an eraser, and you can erase it if you want. This, this one's, I think I've used up. All right, so what's next? All right. Here we go. The kit is going on sale today. For star members at 1030, Kristen is going to put up the CAFE kits, all right? We have, on Friday, it will go to the general, um, the general public, but right now, today, star members get first crack at it. We have two colorways that we chose for you. Mine is in the warm, which I believe we've got maybe, I think, yes, it's the warm we have some left, okay? But, oh no, and I'm talking about the other thing. What am I talking about? I'm talking, okay, I, cut, cut, <laughs> cut, that's for the oak shot. We got it all here on this. Okay, here is the warm spread, okay? And that's kind of what mine is, right? And then here is the cool spread. Oh, that's called warm. Well, we have a cool one too. You know what? I've got the cool one. Uh, look what I've got here. We'll open up the we'll open up the cool one. Look at this adorable kit. The ladies just knocked themselves out at the quilt shop. So let's let's open this one since I messed up. I just I love that the people that work with us care. Well, Suzanne, she's the leader of this pack, cares so much about when you open your box, you're going to be thrilled. So let's, I told her I was going to mess this up. All right. Oh my gosh, I don't own that cave one. <laughs> so beautiful. And, and, and these are not the same prints that are in the pink because we had to just do what we could do with and go from there. Can you guys hear the mouse people? Yeah. Here. Oh my God, these are gorgeous. I'll tell you, Kristen, Suzanne, and I worked on this online, and it was a matter of what could we get, what's, you know, what's in stock. Look at these. And I guarantee you, the uh, warm is just as beautiful. Oh. And then we've got... Um, Yes. Look at these. This. Now the pattern is included. We have an updated pattern. We have the background for you. And um, what's going to happen is when you buy the kit, there will be, um, it's over 100, so you've got free shipping. Also, the pattern will be included in the kit. We will, if you want to do it with your own stuff, have the pattern up down the road before we get started. And it is our endeavor to start early, early in the first couple weeks of October. We got to see what we get through on this and then we'll go from there. All right. Okay. I love, I love this basket quilt. Oh, the windmill quilt is behind you in some of the videos. Huh. Are you guys talking about this thing over here? That, the, the blue and gray thing? That? I'll hang on here for a moment. Hmm. Okay, so, Barbara, is, do you think, or Barbara, is that what you're talking about? Okay. I'm looking, oh, it's Barbara. Barbara, I'll tell you what you can do. Um, go find that video where it's behind me, snap a picture, and send it to me uh, via email, okay? It's A-L-E-X-A-N-D-R-S-N at Gmail. And I'll see if I can help you out. All right. Okay, so what's coming up on Friday? I'm pretty darn excited about this. Right now, the show that's airing is Priscilla Bianchi's. And if you haven't seen it, go watch it. She is 
a delight beyond measure. And her deal, she's from Guatemala, and she works with Guatemalan textiles. And she shows us how her work is, to say it's vibrant would be uh, the understatement, <laughs> okay? And she takes the fear out of working bold. So I caught her yesterday. She is in London right now. No, France right now. I got London on my mind. Um, she is in France right now. And we did a quick little interview, and I will show it Friday. I just love her, and I know you will too. Okay. I think we are good. Um, by the way, uh, Debbie, if you can't get me, on, if one of the platforms is funky, go to the other. So basically, we're on YouTube, and we are on Facebook. And every once in a while, one of the providers is, is kind of screwy, and then the other provider is fine. I, I, it's, the, it's the gods. It's the gods. So, so far, I'm feeling very encouraged because nobody has fallen through my ceiling. Guys, it's horrible what's happened here. If, if I had to tell you what we were spending, you'd have a heart attack. It, it's horrible. But, I mean, it, we have to do it. We back onto a field. And it's just bad. Just bad. So, okay. Uh, will I be carrying, will we be carrying Guatemalan fabrics? You know, I don't know. I'll have to ask Kristen that. Um, the pinwheel quilt. I don't know, Sonia. She's going to have to, Barbara's going to have to email me and then we'll go from there. So, hey, I really appreciate you spending time with us. And um, I'll let you know more. Oh, John has to go in again. Um, it, I mean, we had a nice date. It's the best date we've had in a while. <laughs> you know, so went to Embassy Suites after and I dropped him off at the hospital at five o'clock in the morning in my jammies. We slept in our in our in our semi quasi uh, night gear, so we could just fall out of bed and get into the hospital. Oh, Wanda, we've tried everything. Uh, it, it, the the hot the house is just not secure it, with the mothballs. It's just not secure. The worst of it is, you guys, is I think I have to pull out the bottom half of my kitchen because Adair walks in and she goes, "It smells in here." And I I mean, we live here, so I don't smell it. But this has just turned into a flipping nightmare. Okay. Send me pictures. A-L-E-X-A-N-D-R-S-N -E at Gmail. Thanks, guys.